What's up Chiefs Kingdom? Once again, I am trying to make it down to training camp. I think everything's going to go smooth this morning. No weather this time. Let's get started. Touchdown Kansas City! One of the greatest duos in the history of the National Football League. Patrick Mahomes to Travis Kelsey on a push fade comeback. And the Chiefs have won this incredible divisional playoff game. What's up? Here we are at camp. Let's see what happens. All right, man. I just had like a whole ordeal getting in here because uh, my tickets wouldn't pull up on my phone or whatever. So I haven't got a seat yet, but I'm in. All right, Chiefs Kingdom. So once I got past my ticket debacle, I got in. Practice was already starting. I made my way back to the back hill and got in between the two fields so I could see uh, both fields as best I could. Um, I watched them all go through indies. Uh, through indies, I was mainly watching the offensive line. The offensive line looks good. Uh, that's just no one's surprise. Um, I'll talk about everybody's favorite guy for a second. Orlando Brown looks extremely fit. Um, very much slimmed down. Very mobile. Uh, I know there's a lot of guys that aren't fans of him. I get that. <coughs> Excuse me. But uh, just telling you what I saw, he, he looked very slimmed down. He looked very, um, a lot more athletic than he has in the past. And I'll throw up some of the footage. He ran with the ones right away. So if anybody was thinking that wasn't going to happen um, or they're rooting for him to lose the job, that's not going to happen. And it, it seemed like he was interacting with his teammates really well and everything's positive there. Uh, not too much more to talk about on the offensive line. It was pretty much what you expected. Uh, they ran through indies. They ran through a lot of the double team drills and some zone blocking drills and stuff like that. Everybody looked really good. Everybody was working together. Uh, pretty happy with that. I, I didn't see anything uh, of alarm or concern. I saw good things. I saw good habits. I saw good coaching and uh, really exciting to see what that offensive line as a unit will do. Uh, Kennard, I'm hoping will win that starting position at right tackle, but right now he is is not running with the ones. He's running with the twos for the most part, and that's okay. Um, we still got a lot of time for him to win that job out if he can, and I really do hope he does because that would be a fantastic sign for our offensive line to have such a young group. Uh, next guy I want to talk about is Isaiah Pacheco. He really caught my eye right away. He was running with the twos most of the day, ran with the ones quite a bit as well, uh, mixed in with the ones, especially during situational stuff. And just honestly, man, I, I don't want to oversell it. I don't want to be um, that guy that's selling, um, trying to get clicks with, with sensational you know, topics or saying stuff that sounds just sensational. But <clears throat> I will say this. I think Isaiah Pacheco, to me, yesterday at one practice, looked better than everybody else. Um, I will say McKinnon looked good. CH had some plays, but I, honestly, he didn't look great to me. I'm just, and it's one day. It's one day of practice. So I just want to keep everybody kind of in check with their expectations. It's one practice and people have uh, bad, bad practices from time to time. So it's not, um, it, it might not be reflective of what's happening every day. But to me, Isaiah Pacheco looked like the best back. Rojo was running with the threes most of the day from what I saw. Um, he, that dude is, I did not, one thing about Rojo is that's a big dude. Uh, didn't quite realize quite how big he, he looks, uh, in person. He's physically imposing, which is cool. And I think ultimately he will make the roster. Uh, but that, that backfield right now has some guys. I, Gore is probably on the outside looking in right now. <clears throat> I know. A lot of people are saying that they think they might keep four tight ends. I would say they're probably not going to keep four tight ends because I think they'll keep four running backs, and it's hard to keep four running backs and four tight ends. 
Um, and I will probably do another uh, video where I go ahead and project a roster, a 53-man roster here real soon. Uh, I know I already did an early one, but that is just that, an early one. It was kind of a guess uh, without seeing guys. But now that I've seen guys, I've read a lot of stuff, seen guys play, uh, we can kind of get down to, all right, you know, we kind of, I kind of see where this is going. So, uh, with that said, the backfield to me looked pretty good. I'm not saying CEH, uh, I'm not saying CEH looked like trash. I don't want, I don't want to say that, uh, but I'm just saying he did not look better than Pacheco. He just didn't. Um, he probably looked like the number two to me. Um, I know there's a lot of guys, let me address this topic right now. I know there's a lot of guys pushing for us to go trade for Kareem Hunt right now. I think that would be a terrible idea. Kareem Hunt's wanting to get a contract update. He lied to the team. Uh, things are not okay. And we just, why? Like Pacheco might be the dude. Uh, you don't want to stunt a young running back's growth. And I know some people are saying, we'll just trade CEH for Kareem. Um, I don't think the money works. I don't think it's a good idea, so I'll avoid that one. Uh, moving on, moving right along, because I, I don't want to make this video too, too long. Uh, so the next guys that I want to talk about is Omar Bayless and Justin Watson. Both looked really good. They both got some time with the ones. They get a lot of time with the twos and threes. And it's a little bit harder to tell who the twos and threes are with a big position group like wide receivers. I mean, we got a lot of wide receivers. So people get mixed in a lot. Um, for the most part, you know, I think they were with the twos and threes. Uh, Omar he made a lot of plays, man. I, I kept saying, dang, who's honestly, because I didn't have all the mem uh, numbers memorized by the time I got to camp. But I was like, I kept saying, dang, who's 85? Um, I kept finding myself saying that. Um, going into camp, I'll be completely honest, I didn't know a ton about Omar Bayless. Hadn't really seen a lot of him. Uh, after watching him practice, I can see why there's been people saying, hey, Omar Bayless might catch on. Um, I'm going to go ahead and agree at this time that Omar Bayless may, may be one of those fifth or sixth wide receivers. Uh, he was also returning, practicing returning punts <laughs> during the special teams phase. Uh, so that bodes well for him. And uh, Justin Watson, just he played well. He kept popping out to me. Um, I didn't see him do much special team stuff, but you know, there's every possibility that I miss some things. It's, it's hard to keep track of everything that's going on on two fields while you're also trying to record. So, uh, but Justin did pop out to me. And then, uh, you know, 74. Hold on, let me see who that is. Just write the number down. Uh, yeah, Jerron Christian. That's who I thought it was. So Jerron Christian and I watched him uh, during some team stuff uh, and it was 11 on 11 stuff. And, and there was one play, it was a pass play. He just completely blew the snap count, didn't know when the ball was snapped and was standing still in his stance um, as the defensive end went around him and it was not a good look. Uh, so with everything we've heard um, and everything we've seen while uh, while Orlando wasn't in town and, you know, not seeing Jerron Christian step up to take that spot. Um, Jerron Christian, I think, might be in a little bit of, of trouble. Roderick Johnson, I think, may have already stole that job from him. Um, so I wouldn't be surprised to see Jerron Christian not make the team at this at this point. Um, just my take on it. And like I said, it's one day of practice, so... It's not gospel by any means. Um, I didn't see I didn't see Jerron Christian blow any other plays, but when you blow one that bad, it, it stands out to coaches. It just does. Uh, <laughs> at one point, one of the things I wrote down is kind of funny. Um, they were doing team stuff. They were doing uh, 11 on 11. Pat was out. It was the twos running against the twos. And... Pat was very concentrated all all practice long. And it was over standing by the coaches talking. And at one point, the music got a little loud. And he turns around and says, turn it down. <laughs> so they turn the music down. And needless to say, when KB1 says, turn the music down, 
it got uh, real soft. Uh, the music got real soft for a while. So I found it interesting. Um, a lot of guys like to have the music playing while they're practicing and stuff. But I think Pat, was, it, it stood out to me that Pat was wanting to be focused. He was wanting communication to go well. He was, you know, focusing on talking about things. And if music's blaring in your ear, sometimes you can't communicate very well. So I, I don't think he was mad or anything, but that was kind of the point that he made is, hey, knock it off. I'm trying to talk and we're trying to pay attention to the twos and help those guys out. And he was over there uh, with <clears throat> Shane Bouchelle and, and Crum talking to those guys, helping those guys out. So, you know, he's really become a veteran at this point and, and that's so awesome and encouraging. He's been a leader for a while, but it's just good to see those kind of moments where he takes lead and kind of sets the tone for the practice. Uh, the other guy I talk about, uh, Dion Bush had a pick. Um, so that was nice. It was good to see. I mean, he made a good break on the ball. Uh, he almost dropped the pick, but he did come down with it. So good on him. Um, he may make the team as the fourth safety just because his special team prowess, but it was nice to see him also making plays on the defensive side of the ball. So that's awesome. Uh, Josh Gordon, I didn't catch on uh, through probably half the practice until uh, he made a big play that uh, Josh Gordon changed his number back to 12. Um, I saw, uh, I saw 19, uh, which is uh, Corey Coleman. And I'm like, that, that's not Josh Gordon. He's, he's way too small to be Josh Gordon, but I didn't know what number Josh Gordon had taken on. So he went back to 12. Um, he did catch a really nice deep ball for a touchdown. Um, he was in there mixing it up a little bit with the ones and twos. I don't think that, I think he's on the outside looking in honestly right now from everything that I've heard. And that he's been struggling a little bit in camp, but to me yesterday, he did not struggle in practice. So uh, hopefully for him, he's turning it around and he's going to uh, go on a little hot streak and maybe uh, make the roster. Uh, but, you know, from, from everything I've heard, maybe he's got an uphill battle, but yesterday looked good. Um, so, th so there is that. Um, I didn't get a chance to see a lot of Carlos Dunlop. Uh, Dron Ely dropped a couple passes, but did look good in his routes. Um, so that's good. I did have a Rashawn, uh, Rashad Fenton sighting. He was out there in shorts uh, in a jersey and just standing on the field while they were doing team stuff. And uh, you could tell he just wants to be back out there, which is always an encouraging, uh, awesome sight. And you want players to be hungry to get back out there. So he looked ready. Uh, I will say... Uh, Leo Chanel popped out to me several times, um, especially especially in run, but uh, he did make some plays in pass coverage. He, he popped a guy coming over the middle. I'm not sure. I don't remember who he popped, but somebody came over the middle on a crosser, and he, he popped the crap out of him, and, and the guy dropped the ball. Uh, so that was good to, and encouraging to see. Frank Clark, uh, again, was – after practice, just spending time with guys, young guys, working on the craft. You could see him really just spending time breaking down uh, why he does things, why he makes a certain move, what move to make, what counter move, all that kind of stuff. So that was interesting and cool. And um, I stood there for a while just watching Frank do that. And I really do feel like it's, it's uh, a genuine thing. He's just putting the time in. And I feel like you know, maybe putting the bottle down was the best thing that could ever happen to that guy because he's really turned it around from what I saw uh, yesterday. Um, let's see, another guy that popped out to me uh, and I saw make some plays yesterday was Noah Gray. Uh, I think he's definitely on the roster. I think he's definitely uh, in a position where he'll be at least the third tight end. Um, we'll see what happens with Jody Fortson. I'm not completely sold that he's a lock for number two. Um, we'll see. I, you know, availability is a skill, and he hasn't had that skill for a while. So no offense to him. I'm not being uh, mean or anything like that. But, you know, until he makes himself available all the time, we can't really depend on him. Uh, Jordan Franks made a couple plays. He's a tight end. Probably not going to make the roster. He did make a couple plays, though. So just a tip of the cap to him, Derek. Derek Gore made some plays. Uh, let's see. Um, 
the D-backs, the young D-backs. I do want to talk about those guys because I got a chance to see a lot of those guys. And <clears throat> they're impressive. It's an impressive group. group. Um, really happy with what I was seeing there. Uh, let's see who stood out with the with the young guys Trent McDuffie played well I'll say this Trent McDuffie is bigger than I thought for a 5'11 guy he seems long he seems longer than your average 5'11 guy which is really good I really like that um, let's see who else Justin Reed looked really good um, I almost let's take a moment here um, I try. I did go and get some stuff for to give away for when we reach our goal of a, a thousand subscribers. I got two of those footballs, and I got this awesome. It's hard to see blackout hat, blackout hat right there. Excuse me. Um, so I tried to get those autographed. I was standing right in front of Justin Reed, and I just you know I want to talk about this for just a second, and uh, I'll try to wrap up this video, uh, but. The autograph culture, like something needs to change, man. You guys need to do some soul searching because there's grown adult people like boxing people out to get in there to get autographs. It's corny. It's ridiculous. And you're pathetic and you're rude. And to the guy that I was standing beside walking out that growled at his kids and said, you need to be more aggressive. You're pathetic, dude. You are pathetic. These little kids I'm talking about couldn't have been more than eight years old. Uh, had just got some autographs and they, they squirreled in there and got some autographs. And this dad just growls at them that they're not aggressive enough and that they had uh, people cut in front of them. Of course, people cut in front of them. People were rude. And I understand to some point what he's saying that, hey, you got to stick up for yourself. Um, so maybe I misunderstood him, but the way I heard it, man, chill out a little bit. Don't don't get down your kid's throat because he's not squirreling in there, cutting in front of people and, and being rude, man. Like your kids were just trying to do the right thing, I think. And that, it was disturbing to me, to be honest. And if you see this video and, and you got a problem with what I said, too f***ing bad. I, I don't really care. I saw what I saw and... Uh, it was disturbing to me as a father, and we got to do better, Chiefs Kingdom. I, I don't like the way we were acting out there just to try to get some autographs. It was kind of, and it's not because, it's not because I didn't get autographs, because frankly, I could have, and I let a little kid go in front of me, because it's more important to the little kid. Um, he'll remember that, getting that autograph from Justin Reed for the rest of his life. Um, I frankly don't remember the last autograph I got. It's not that important to me. Uh, and it shouldn't be as an adult. A lot of guys stayed behind and really tried to get as many autographs signed as they could. One of those guys was Legereus Sneed. Kind of the same situation. I tried to get up there and get his autograph and people were just rude and, and really super aggressive. It was just kind of weird. So um, no, no guarantees. That was my intent to get those signed. But if I can't do them, I'm still going to give them away. They're still bought down at training camp. So that's hopefully cool for you guys. Josh Williams was the other guy I wanted to talk about. He looked really good. I uh, really liked what he was doing. Um, everything that I saw from him was on par. Sky Moore um, looked really good in practice. He had a one near catch that was just, if he had caught it, it would have been one of the best catches I've ever seen, uh, but almost never made it. So, uh, you know, he, he has great hands, which brings me to my next point. During special teams, he was back catching or attempting to catch punts and he let two of them bounce right off his chest piece and um, I'm not trying to bash this guy more but hey look I've said it before punt return catching punts catching kicks is different than catching a ball that somebody throws to you and it's a skill and right now from what I saw in one practice this guy more does not have that ability he does have a lot of other abilities though. Maybe he just had a bad day. So um, I don't wanna be that guy that overreacts to things. He, I saw him let two of them bounce right off his chest though, which is kind of a concern for me. I went into coach mode and almost wanted to go over there and like tell him what he was doing wrong. But I didn't, I controlled myself. Um, 
with that, man, I think those are the highlights. Those are the guys that I noticed the most. I will pop up a bunch of video on here and hopefully you guys enjoy it. If you have questions, ask them down in the comments. If you want to argue with me, uh, pop them down in the comments. If you want to argue with each other, go for it, man. Until then, I'm going to try to keep this uh, at the 20 minute mark. Thank you so much. Thank you, as always, for supporting the channel. Like, share, subscribe, hit that bell notification uh, so you get updates when I let videos out. And I'll talk to you soon. Bye. I'm still fly, I know. I'm still fly, I'm still fly, let's go.